another day in the fish room. I'm gonna be starting the breeding project of the orange Australia killifish again. I'm gonna be giving that another go. I need to work with the rice fish that came in, still um, struggling a little bit, and we'll see if we can help those guys out, and we'll see what else they get into. These guys have been struggling a little bit since I got them. I thought I took care of the fungal issue that was going on, but you could see kind of at the front of the mouth there that we still got some fungal issues. So what I'm gonna do is put more antifungal medicine in here and I'm actually gonna use some salt. But before I do that, I'm actually gonna take all this algae out because there are eggs in here. So you can see there's one up front there and there's a couple here. There's a bunch of them all in this moss here well, or algae. And I'm gonna take that out and maybe we can hatch those eggs out and kind of have a backup uh, before I start throwing meds in here that we have some fry grow up. Obviously I freaked these guys out a little bit. Tank was a little bit of a mess after I took the algae out. So I did a water change, kind of just to reset, take all the meds out and restart fresh. Put a couple tablespoons of salt in there. I put some Marison in there. Um, in case it's some kind of infection and the salt will probably take care of it if it's a fungal issue. But the good news is when I started this video, I only counted seven fish and we started with nine. So I thought I lost two somehow, I couldn't find their bodies and then magically two appeared. So I don't know if they were hiding in that algae or what, but I'm happy that we didn't lose any, but I do want to take care of whatever is going on with them. Starting with the killifish here. These are the orange Australia killifish. These are my favorite killifish. Both the males and females look really good in my opinion. Males have that nice orange and the females have the yellow body. And the reason I wanna make sure I breed these guys is actually because this female here. She's got the black on her body, which I've never seen before. None of the other females have it. I wanna keep that trait and possibly pass it along Maybe over time, you know, over years of breeding them, we could develop some kind of patterns on the female with black and yellow. I think that would look awesome. If not, these guys still are looking really good. A little bit of backstory on these guys. I did breed this group. I started with a pair, bred a bunch, sold them. These are the ones I kept. I tried to breed them again. And for some reason I was getting like one or two eggs, couldn't figure it out feeding them, did all water changes, everything was fine. And then one day I realized that they actually had Cal Calmineris redworm and actually both these tanks had it. And same story with these guppies, for some reason, you can see that one, she's an old, old female there. She's almost two years old at this point. But I had these three females here, couldn't, couldn't get them to drop any fry couldn't figure out what it was, had them for months and months. They also had Camillaris redworm. As soon as I treated both these tanks, these guys drop fry. So all the fry are in here now. So I'm hoping that after treating these guys, I've treated them twice over the last three months. Almost certain that they're clean of the parasite. They're eating really well, bellies are filling up. I have a spawning tank set up for them. First thing I'm gonna try is one or two males and all the females. And if I don't have luck with that, I'll try just a pair because I've had luck with that in the past. If I don't have luck with that at all, I'm gonna assume either these guys are too old, which they are pretty old at this point, maybe two years old also, more like one and a half years old. Or something, you know, maybe they're still plagued by the parasite. I just can't see the worms coming out of the belly there. But if I can't get eggs from this group, unfortunately, I think I'm just gonna purchase another group. Still keep these guys, cause they're really pretty. This tank, I really like the scape. I just haven't scraped any algae off the front. Uh, it's just eco-complete with a random uh, aquascaping rock and some pogo stem and slotus octopus. Really like this guy. these guys' behavior. Really pretty fish. Um, I'll keep this group separate and maybe I'll order in some new ones. Hopefully we don't have to do that and I can keep this line going, but we'll see. Here's the breeding setup. It's a 10 gallon. We just got a sponge filter in the back. 
no plants in here, just the acrylic spawning mop that I made. Just so that they have nowhere else to spawn except for that mop where I'm going to be taking that out and looking for eggs. I've had problems in the past where I tried to spawn these guys in tanks with a matten filter and they would actually lay eggs in the matten filter because it was a uh, taking up the whole back there and I guess it was more appealing to them than the spawning mop. So hopefully the sponge filter isn't an issue. Haven't had an issue with that in the past. I'll be feeding these guys bloodworms and all frozen bloodworms, frozen brine shrimp, live baby brine. Really fattening these guys up. I've already been doing that for the last couple days, but now that they're in the breeding tank, maybe they'll start laying eggs on there. I'll check in a couple days, and if I don't see any eggs, I'll have to change things up, maybe pair them off. You know, most fish, when you move them into a new tank, you grab them in a net and throw them in a new tank, they would be stressed out. Killifish, they don't care. I just threw them in here, new environment, and they're ready to eat already. So really good sign. I don't have to worry about these guys acclimating or anything. My favorite tank in the fish room with my favorite strain of guppies is finally doing well again. You can see that we have a bunch of activity in here, many different ages of fry, which I love to see. The adults are doing well. And it was a little scary almost losing this colony, but to build them back up feels really good. What I need to do today is take out all the fry that are in this breeder net. They're definitely big enough uh, to not get chased down and eaten by the adults and put a new female in. And I figured I'd show you how I know which female to pick, which one's the closest to dropping. Looks like it's this female right here. And if we take a close look at her, her belly is almost boxy versus just being round. And you can see the, the back here with the reddish pink. That's the eyeballs of the new fry yet to be born. So she's really close to dropping. Let's see a female that's just round belly instead of boxy. See this female is more rounded instead of boxy. I don't know if it's coming well on camera, but in person, I, it, you just know the look. And usually when they box out like that, it's usually a day or two until they, until they drop fry. And what I like to do is put the female in here and I'll throw frozen adult brine shrimp, blood worms, um, food that's really going to fill her up so that she's not hungry. She'll still pick at some fry, but if she's really full, uh, she usually leaves the majority of them alone. And I try to check as often as I can and make sure that I don't leave the fry in there too long. So really depends. And sometimes I've made really good timing. Another time I waited too long, I didn't notice and she ate all the fry. Something else that's exciting about this tank is that the male guarding the cave is actually one that I had bred and raised in this tank. Oh, and actually, I'm just noticing now, looks like there's some newborn fry, or maybe a day or two old, hiding in this corner. These are smart guys. They know if they, at this size, if they were swimming out in the middle, they definitely get picked off. Leave it to the guppies to steal the show here. But I'm really excited to see one fish that I had bred is now trying to spawn, now old enough. I think they're about eight months old, nine months old at this point. And that's really what you want to do as a breeder is get multiple generations into your water. With guppies, it's a lot easier because their life cycle is a lot shorter. You can have multiple generations within a few months. With the plecos, it's a lot harder just because the grow time is longer. Next door to that tank, we have the Vienna Guppy tank. Figured I'd give an update on these guys. A lot of you guys are asking about them. I know you're really excited to order these guys. If you haven't done so already, you can sign up with the with your email on the website to be notified when I do post them. I think I'm gonna post them after New Year's. My last shipping date is probably gonna be um, second, first, second week in December. Just because everything with Black Friday, uh, the shipping already because the pandemic has been insane. I don't want to risk any fish getting 
delayed in the mail because of the extra holiday rush of shipping. Post office can barely handle it as it is. So I'll probably wait a week or two after New Year's when everything clears up and put these guys on the website. That'll give me time to build the numbers up. There's a lot in here. It doesn't look like it because this tank's really overgrown. And just yesterday I had a female drop fry in here. There's maybe 20 or so in this breeder box. That I was really happy to get from the biggest female I have, a nice drop. And it looks like some of the ones that are born in this tank, some of the females will probably drop fry of their own. That'll help me get the numbers up. Check it out guys, a nice little surprise here while I was working in the fish room. This trout goodyid or Iliadon fursidin is actually giving birth right now. And you can see what I was talking about before where they give birth, it's almost like a dolphin or a whale where the tail sticks out there. And you can see that these fry come out really big. Not like guppies or platies or mollies. And they'll have a few fry. Really cool to catch that in action. I was hoping to at some point. You could see that the previous drop, you know, are, are much bigger now. All these guys over here, we got the two males here. Really cool to see. Here's the upgrade to the fish room I was talking about. I'm really excited about it. It's a commercial dehumidifier. When you guys support the channel, uh, purchase from the website, subscribe, all that stuff, it allows me to make upgrades here in the fish room. Right now, the dehumidifier that we're running right now is always running and it's not coming up on camera, but right now it's 66% uh, humidity, which is too much. It's struggling all the time. It's always on. Um, we have a lot of water in this fish room. Even though we do have lids and stuff, there is a lot of evaporation. So this commercial dehumidifier actually runs um, 140 pints a day that it'll remove from the air. So much more than the current one we have. So I'm really excited to get this going. I'm hoping that it also produces some heat and helps heat the space a little bit. Kind of get a two for one there. I picked this one because it had really good reviews uh, and it doesn't look like a commercial dehumidifier. There are a lot of options out there that you can tell right away. Those are clearly commercial, but these two don't look that different. Uh, they don't take up, you know, this one doesn't take up a lot of room like some of the other commercial ones were. And if I didn't tell you that the one on the right was commercial, you might not know. So hopefully it performs really well. I'll let you guys know, keep you updated. This thing is a beast. I'm excited to see how long it takes to get down to, hopefully we get below 50% humidity. It's already moving down, we just saw a change. That was another day in the fish room. Thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't, and we'll see you in the next one.